Let's give God some glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Just move and welcome somebody this morning. Ever increasing faith service. God is doing great and mighty things in our lives. Amen. 21 years of our existence. Hallelujah. Oh, are you happy? 21 years of our existence. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. Welcome. We warmly welcome you to the ever increasing faith service. Hallelujah. God bless you for coming. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. God bless you so much in our month of the word. Hallelujah. It's the word festival. Hallelujah. 
Amen. You have a testimony briefly. You want to share with the Lord what the Lord has done for you. Please don't keep it. Come and share. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody here? Yes. 21 years of his goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Mommy is coming. Let's put the hands together for Doc. Yeah. Oh, are you clapping? Please clap well unto Jesus. I just want to thank God for all that he's done for me. Um, as of yesterday, I retired from the police service. And the service has been sterling. When I say sterling, it's like a feeling can be a God has been awesome. All the operations I did in that hospital were successful. Nobody died in my hands. You know, God's name has been glorified. And I mean, I don't have enough words. So I just want to thank God for looking after me all this while. You know, in our job, there are a lot of back cutting, leg cutting, and all. Sometimes, even when you are doing operation, the people you are doing the operation with don't want you to succeed. You know, they want you to fail, yes, so that you have a bad name. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. He has glorified his name. And as Papa prayed for me earlier, greater things are yet to come. So I stand here and I thank God. And of course, today I'm 60 years old. And I can't thank God enough. Amen. <laughs> Oh, sorry. oh, are you are you clapping? As you clap, you tap into the sister years. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, Mama. We thank you so much to have such a wonderful personality like you. Hallelujah. We are privileged to have Dr. Abwa in our midst. Let's give God the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so we on and we'll invite the ever-increasing faith choir to give us a song, a powerful song as we flow with the service and expect the word. Today is a communion and the word combination. It's a very powerful combination. I mean, put your hands together as they come beautifully and wonderfully dressed to come minister unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, amen, hallelujah. Okay, so this morning, we want to sing about the greatness of our Lord, amen. He's great and greatly to be praised, amen.
Would you sing with me? How great is our God and all everybody, every nation and every tribe will sing. Say you're the name of our own Father, you are worthy of our praise. And my heart, my heart will sing. triumph hallelujah amen god is wonderful how great you are i love the song how great how great you are that's a powerful song ministration lift your two hands up and say i thank you lord when you thank god you create a platform for miracles i thank you lord thank god for a short time thanksgiving multiplies miracles a seed Produces miracles. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We thank you. We thank you. Mm. How can I say thanks? 
for all the things that you've done for me. Hear the song. Things so undeserved that you came to prove your love for me. Come on, sing. The voice is of a million angels. Could, could not, not express my gratitude oh, for all that I am and never hope to be. I owe it all to you, to, to God. Be your glory. Come on, everybody. To Glory. Be the glory for, for the things he has done. With his blood, he has shed me. With, With his power, he has raised we thank you for the things you have done speak your word transform us into your image even by your spirit in Jesus mighty name we have given thanks amen please take your seats now I welcome you to our first service and I want through a special welcome to those who are here for the first time to worship with us and pray for you before I start today is your first time of come to this service. I want to pray for you before I start preaching. So if you are here for the first time, please stand on your feet and I want to pray for you that God will open your eyes, God will touch your life by his word. Hallelujah. Anybody here for the first time, stand on your feet right now and let's clap for you and then welcome you officially into the third service. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you so much. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, we are still talking about our caption for the year, our theme for the year, which is I'll build my church. I will say, everybody go. I'll build my church. Say it again. I will build my church. Say it again. I'll build my church. The theme is from Matthew 16, verse 18. And I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The most important thing Jesus is doing now is building a church. That is God's major priority. Now, when you build with Jesus, sup supplies will come. We should collaborate with Jesus to build the church. Now, some people, they don't build church. They destroy church. But we're supposed to build church. Hallelujah. Join Jesus to build a church. I'll build my church. And one thing is that if you are built with Jesus Christ, you get very close to Jesus. The way to grow with, into Christ is to be like Christ and is to build like Christ. So I think and I believe that if we build a church like Jesus is doing, we shall be like him. It will bring you very close to Jesus Christ. Check those who are in church business, like pastors. They are very close to God because they are in the business of building the church. You want to be close to Jesus Christ, start building the church. Hallelujah. Bringing in souls to church. We're doing church planting the missions. These are the things very close to God's heart. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Jesus vowed. He said, vow. I'll build my church. And nobody can stop the church. No demon, no devil can destroy the church. The church is marching on. It's being built up, and the grace of us shall never ever prevail against the church. Hallelujah. Now, one of the ways Jesus is using to be the church is to impart his word. The word is the major platform upon which Jesus is building the church. Amen. Jude 1 20. 
Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. The faith is from the word. Faith comes by hearing the word. So you build your word content. You build your word capacity. Amen. If you have God's word, it will build you up. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. Apostle Paul preached somewhere in Ephesus for three years. And when he was leaving them, finally, he bade them farewell. And he said, I commend you to God, to the word of his grace. He is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. So the word of God can build you up and give you an inheritance. Our inheritance in Christ is in the book of Revelation 5, verse 12. If you read that place, talks about the fact that when Christ died, he received what? Power. He received riches. He received strength. He received honor, glory, and blessings. Seven powerful things Jesus received as our inheritance for us. But these things called riches and power and wisdom, they only come on the basis of your faith in the word. You, you access them by faith in the word. So you need to build your work capacity. The word is so important. So, you see, over here I said something. We don't do magic. We don't perform magic. Our magic is the word. Our uh, magic is what? The way. The word can give you life, can give you strength, can, give, can prosper you. The word can heal you. The word can do all things. All things are made by the word. So all things can come by the word. Amen. So major on the word. Make the word your main priority in your service to God. Access the word. Read the Bible. Understand the word of God. Confess the word. Walk in the word. Amen. The early church. We really did that. In Acts chapter uh, 6 verse 7, and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. The word of God increased. If we want the church to increase and to multiply, the way is to multiply the word. Everybody be a preacher. A preacher of righteousness, of salvation. That's how we can multiply. It won't come by accident. When a church to grow, the church must take the word and multiply it. You must have many people preaching the word. Every corner, everywhere, in the offices, on streets, in houses, every place where people live, we preach the word. When God says multiplies, the number of people in every church will multiply. It's so important. And I think that when this particular service to grow, all of us here, must be responsible. Amen. We have to start preaching the word. Preach the word. Save somebody. Bring it to church. And one thing is that it's something you do which heaven responds, responds to. You see, when one soul gets saved, all heaven rejoices. Even the father will be jumping. The son will be jumping. All the angels will be clapping their hands. Because one single soul has been delivered from hell. Hell is not a place to go and come. I'm going to cry and come. I'm going to the U.S. and come. Hell is a place to go forever. You die, for, you, you suffer forever. So God knows the horrors of hell. So when one person is saved, God himself becomes happy. Heaven rejoices when one soul repents. So we need to take God's word and preach God's word. That is why I was seeking first word, the kingdom of God in this world. Righteousness. And all things shall be added. You see, all things can be those who preach the word. Who take God's word serious. Who see God's kingdom first. Hallelujah. Say amen to that one. Are you in church? Acts 12, 24. It says that. Acts 12, 24. But the word of God grew and multiplied. The word must grow and multiply. How will it grow? Electricity doesn't have legs. But it's cable wire that carries it. You know, you know that. You know, you know it. If you own power into your, in your house, it won't fly in the air. Power flows through cables. Amen. So you, you must buy cables. You must buy cables and put poles around. That is how it is. God's word doesn't fly in the air. Men are the vessels that carry the word. So if one goes out to multiply, we must also multiply them. We must go out and preach. We must preach the word of God in our offices, our homes, everywhere. And then we'll see results. Hallelujah. Acts 19, 20. See what happened. 
And the word, so, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. In Acts, we see God's word always increasing and multiplying. Here, the word grew mightily and prevailed. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. But then here we say that the word grew and prevailed. So either the gates of hell are prevailing or the word is prevailing. Either God's word or the gates of hell. It means the word of God is the antidote to the gates of hell. We need God's word. We need God's word. The word of God grew mightily and prevailed. If he says you are healed, you are healed. If he says you prosper, you will prosper. If he says you are on top, you are on top. The word grew and prevailed. Look, if you are believing God's word for something, it shall prevail. It shall prevail. Let me hear a big amen. Or let me hear amen to this one. So when you amen, you are trying to say it should come to pass. It's a prophetic word. Say a big amen now. Whatever you are believing God's word for, it shall prevail. Hallelujah. Now, why does God's word come? Why does he come? He comes to do some things. Number one, he comes to fulfill a purpose. Isaiah 55, verse 10 to 11. When God's word is being preached or is being taught, it carries an assignment in your life. Each time God's word comes to you, it comes with an assignment. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bad, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11 says that, so is the word. Amen. Verse 11 says, so is the word. So shall my word be. Be smart over there. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So just like it produces seed and bread, God's word can give seed and bread. It shall not return to me void. It shall not come back empty. But it shall accomplish. Say accomplish. Say accomplish. Say accomplish. Or fulfill that which I please. And shall prosper in the thing well to I sent it. So God's word comes to prosper. It comes to prosper. To fulfill something in the heart of God in your life. In other words, God's word comes to meet a need in your life. Please, believe God's word. You may not see physically. It's spiritual. Because God's word is spirit. John says it's three. It's spirit. And it's life. It comes as a spiritual entity and in past life which manifests. So, value the word of God. Each time God's word is coming, understand, it's coming to fulfill a particular purpose or assignment in your life. It may be coming, healing your body, you may not see it. But as you keep hearing, you see that your life is getting better and better and better and better. Hallelujah. To meet a need. So, now how do we appreciate the word of God? Because you must, what you don't appreciate, you don't attract. What you don't value will never come to you. So, you must place value, premium on God's word. How do you do it? One, handle the Bible like God's book. Did you hear that? Handle the Bible like God's book. Handle God's word like it's coming from God, not man. Now that you can see me, oh, I also a pastor, you quite know him. Oh, apostle, yeah. Oh, we are all human beings. Okay? And if you connect with me in the physical, you won't be blessed. Physically, we are human beings. We eat kenke, we eat banku, we eat gari, we eat eba, we eat um, all kinds of things, we know. But if you connect with me be- on the basis of the physical things, you won't be blessed. See beyond the physical. Though I'm flesh, God uses human vessels to be a blessing. Hallelujah. So don't see me like I'm preaching my own, my own word. I'm preaching God's word. I'm preaching God's word. Oh, I'm preaching God's word. You are quiet to me. I'm preaching God's word. Open your mouth and say amen. If you are alive, say a big amen. Are you alive? Wave to me. Are you alive? Then clap your hands. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. These hands were not borrowed. You don't pay loan on your hand. You pay loans on your hand. I pay alone. Give God a clap offering. Hallelujah. 
I'm not praying alone, so clap for the Lord. Amen. So see it as God's word. Second Timothy 3, verse 16. Second Timothy 3, 16. It says that all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Every part of scripture is inspired by God. Every part from Genesis to Revelation, every part of it is inspired by God. It's breathed by God. God has breathed into it. And it comes, and it's profitable for doctrine. You see, God's word profits. I said God's word profits. I'm an example. I grew with God's word, and now I've profited in my life. Family, ministry, it is the word of God. When God's word comes, it comes to profit you for doctrine. Isaiah 48, verse 17. I am the Lord thy God who teaches you to profit. Huh? Profit and loss, business. But God's word doesn't make you lose. I tell you, you will never, nobody takes God's word and loses. You will never lose. Try and see. Try and see. You will never lose. Never ever will you lose with God's word. It comes to profit you. Amen. We read that it comes to profit you. Amen. Good for, for profit, for reproof, for correction. For instruction in righteousness. It to correct you. Sometimes when we preach and hit you, take it. Say, I receive it. You are going wrong. It hits you. Receive it. Change your life. It to correct you. It to correct you. Amen. You are in a wrong relationship. It comes and hits you hard. Withdraw. And move on the right relationship. It to correct you. It to instruct you. It to show you what to do. Do this. Do that. And take it. I got to me. God's word is profitable in all these areas. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. So when it comes, it comes to, it comes to accomplish a thing, and then we have to appreciate God's word and value it as a book that comes from God. Hallelujah. Now, second, second Corinthians 3, verse 18 says that God's word changes us into, his, into Christ's image. Second Corinthians 3, 18. God's word changes us. But we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When you look into God's word, you are changed. You become what you behold. You become what you see. What you see is what you become. What you see in God's word, you are changed the same thing you see. That's why you must see God. Never go out every day without reading the Bible. Please. How many of you dressed this morning before you came to church? Let me see. Wave to me. You dressed. How many of you stood in front of your mirror and polished? Felicia, I know you did that because you are a beautician. Amen. Who again? George? All of you. You stood before a mirror. And the mirror told you that your face powder is okay. It's not too much. It's reasonable. And you did the, 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 the pencil on your eyebrow, right? The, the eyebrow, left and right. And you put something on your um, um, uh, eyelids and all those stuff. And all those stuff, all, you were looking at the mirror, weren't you? When you finish, you say, you, ah, I'm looking nice. And you accepted what the mirror told you. So you moved out from your house with a picture of the mirror's image in your mind. This is how I looked. And you move up in confidence, in boldness, because you know you dress yourself very well. That is how you handle God's word. You go to God's word, it tells you you are more than a conqueror. Wow. You move out of town, I'm more than a conqueror. You meet somebody in town, it insults you, I'm more than a conqueror. You do business, I see something's happening, I'm more than a conqueror. Whatever you meet in town, the word tells you, I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. You see some things going on wrong against you. I'm out there conquer. Whatever happens to you, whether in family or your office or your business area, any area of your life which is going against you, you look at the mirror. It says you are more than a conqueror. So go. Like David. David saw Goliath try to bully the Israelites. And he knew whom he was. He said, What? How can this uncircumcised belief says defy the armies of God? I'll kill him. I will kill him. The God who gave me the power to kill the lion and the bear. The same God. 
who killed this man for me. Hallelujah. So, David saw himself in the mirror of the word. What God did before. He can do it again for you. So, don't, you can't fail in life. So, look at what God is saying. It's a mirror. It's a mirror. It is what? It is what? The mirror. Amen. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ came, what did he come to do? John 17, verse 8. He came to preach the word. He gave his word to the apostles. The disciples, for I've given them, I've given to them that the words which thou givest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came. So that's the thing. You see, when Jesus Christ came, all he had was a word, living word. He gave it out. Then look at um, um, First Peter one verse twenty three. First Peter one twenty three. We are born again by the word. The word of God gives birth to us. The born again experience is on the platform of believing the word is the seed that gives it back to us. Amen. Are you there? Then John 10, John 10 verse 34, 35. John 10, 34, 35. God's word converts us into what? Into, into, into divinities. Yeah, we are God's. We are God. We, are, we bear God's nature. You are like a God. I'm telling you, you are a God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Ye are gods. Ye are gods. Verse 35. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So when God's word comes unto you, it converts you from a mere human being, natural man, into a spiritual man, into, into divinity, into God's nature. God's word puts a nature in you. So you're, no, you're not a mean person. You're not an, an ordinary person. Like somebody on the street, you are a super O. You do hear? I said you are what? Super O means super ordinary. You're not an ordinary person working in the, in, the, in the streets or in the classroom or in the office. You are a special person, super ordinary, supernatural, bearing the image of the creator in you. Come on, give God some clap for free. That's what you are. It's a converter. It's a transformer. Say that to me, God's word. It's a converter. Say God's word. It's a transformer. It's a, it transforms me from a mere human being to a divinity. So I'm, 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 I bear two nature, two fold. Human nature, eh? and then God's nature. It's in me. It's in you right now. That's what God... So you must grow into it. That's why... Uh, second, first Peter two verse two. First Peter two verse two. The same word that gave birth to us makes us grow into that nature. Now, when somebody is born, a baby is born. Is a baby an animal? Huh? It's a human being, baby, but human being, baby, but a baby is helpless because a baby, even though it's a human being, human nature, same blood, everything is human, but baby, you know. Your spiritual growth into divinity to act like God, to overcome in this life is dependent on growing your spirit man. You must mature your spirit man. And how does it happen? By the word of God. So, there are some things I can do, you can't do. You know, you know why? Because I'm more mature than you. Unfortunately, in the church today, there are all born Christians. Let's read. Everybody go. First verse 2 verse 2. As, as newborn what? Babies. Continue. Desire the what? Sincere milk of what? The word that you may grow. But there are old born babies too. Christians who have been old, they've been in Christ for 20 years. 30 years. But their life doesn't change. The same. How they were years ago, the same. They can talk. They can quarrel. They can insult. They can be... They can insult you, stupid. I mean, they, they can insult you until you, you die. They don't change. They can steal. They can, they can lie in their teeth. Christians born again 20 years ago, and they're still babies. The greatest problem of a church is when they are all babies. A, a baby church, which is full of baby Christians, pastors who are settling scores all the time. That in the instead, of, instead of praying, there will be certainly issues between sister A, brother B, and every time issues, issues, because it's a baby church. 
carnality at its highest peak. Amen. Something small, I'm leaving the church. Something small, I'm going. Grow. I said grow. Oh, let me, amen, sweet. I said grow. Are you here? Did you, did you take bread? You didn't take, take breakfast. How much you take? Your amen is like you are fasting. I said grow. Uh, take breakfast. You like take breakfast before you come to church. You come. You come at eleven o'clock. So you have ten o'clock to take breakfast. Amen. Take some juice, some 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 some, some smoothie. Amen. We leave the house very early, five five thirty, five forty five. You know, but you live around maybe nine, ten, so you can take some breakfast. So when I say shout, you can shout. Hallelujah. I said grow. Yeah. You are the middle, middle. I said grow. Correct. So when somebody does something against you, who? Who is that? You don't mind anybody because you know whom you are serving. You are a mature Christian. You're not a baby anymore. Hallelujah. Are you following me? Yeah. So God's way, your growth is, is a process, but then you keep growing from one level to the other. Hallelujah. Now, how do we practically um, use the word of God? How do we practice the word? How do we practice the word? That's the point. To grow into his image. Because you must grow. From glory to glory to glory, no limit. We, look, let me tell you, I'm growing. I am struggling every day to grow. Every day I struggle to move from one level to the other. So change your level. Change your level. So the image in you can manifest. And manifest as a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So how can you practice? Number one, we must see eye to eye with God's word. One, you want to practice God's word. Agree with God's word. See eye to eye. Amen. Amos 3 verse 3. Amos 3 3. Amen. Amos 3 3. Everybody, let's read. Go. Can two work together except they be agreed? So, two friends cannot be friends until they agree to be friends. We can't work with God without agreeing with God. God's terms are His word. We have to move from our terms. Our terms are human, our terms are weaklings, our terms are uh, 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 defined with problems, are faulty. God's terms are perfect. So move from your 40 terms into God's terms. Agree with God and what God says. Then you can work with God. Are you understanding me? Agree with God. Amen. Then that means there must be a mental shift. Say mental shift. Say mental shift. It's called paradigm shift. You see, you need to shift your mentality. This is how you were, you were thinking at first. This is how God thinks. So move your thinking from A to B. That's all. God, how does God see you? God sees you in the same perspective. See that way. Agree with God. Do you understand that? Number two, very fast. Amen. We must see ourselves in the mirror of the word. See ourselves in the mirror of the word. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18. Therefore, 318. Oh my. Who is there? Second Corinthians 318. But we are with open face, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. So when you behold, it means you see. What you behold is what you become. So see yourself in the mirror. What does the mirror tell you about, about, about yourself? So what does God say about you? You look at it in the scriptures. What does it say about you? In the, in, the, in, the, in the scriptures, what does it say about you? Amen. See what God says about you and accept it. You are more than a conqueror, you are more than a conqueror. For instance, uh, in the book of 2 Corinthians 5.17, we are a new creation. You are no more an old person. All things are passed away. So walk in it. See that you are a new person. Amen. First John 3, 2. He says that we are like him. We shall be like him when we see him. We are like him. So in your mentality, see that you are like him. See that like you are like him. Walk like you are, you are like him. Amen. Romans 8, um, Philippians 4, 
13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. So I can see yourself that I can do all things. When they give you a job, is it because I can do it? They give you a contract and these things is, is hard. Say, I can do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Are you here with me? Yeah, they give you a contract. This is difficult. Say, I can do it through Christ. It's with me. That's how God sees you. Amen. They give you a certain serious assignment to complete over a time. Say, I can do it. So, manage to see yourself in the mirror of the word. What they say, see yourself and fit yourself into it. You are able. Then, for instance, it says, um, um, Romans 8, 37. We, in, uh, we are more than conquerors. Romans 8, 37. We are more than a conqueror. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. So, you are more than a conqueror. Troubles will come. Insults will come. They will abuse you. You will lose your job. You, this will happen. Uh, nobody is proposing to you. The, uh, some things we have. Please, in all these things, we are more than what? Oh, say that thing. Say that me. In all these things, I am more than a conqueror. Oh, say, say three times. One. Uh-huh. In all these things, I am more than a conqueror. A conqueror is a fighter. If you don't have fight, you can't be a conqueror. So if you are fighting right now, God says, I want to conquer. See yourself the way God sees you in his word. Are you with me? Last one. We must, okay, let me give you one more scripture. First Peter 2 verse 24. First Peter 2 24. By his stripes I was healed. By his stripes I was healed. Amen. Amen. So if you are sick, say I'm healed. How does God see you? Healed. The cross, he said it is finished. He took the sickness on the cross. So see, the sickness may be there, but don't confess it. Don't say I'm sick. Let the sick, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm what. So if you are poor, don't say I'm poor. Maybe today there's no money. That doesn't mean you are poor. Hello? Look at me. I said now there's no money. But that doesn't mean you are poor. When I was preaching, I think last week I said I'm rich. And I saw people, people looking at me. Ah, ah. Seriously, like, is Pastor very rich? So should I say I'm poor? I, I'm poor and I'm poor. Then. But no, 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 no. I'm rich. Sometimes no money, but say I'm rich. If you are say I'm strong. You see, what you say is what you have. The size of your mouth, huh, the circumference of your lips determines the outcome of your life. The circumference of your lips. Huh? Open your mouth wide and I what? I will feel. So don't let anything stop you from talking. Sometimes some of you we don't, we don't talk much. They say you will fail and you are quiet. You reply and say, I'm not a failure, I'm breaking through. Your friends insult you, look at her, she's not beautiful. Say, I'm beautiful. When they say something, say something back. Goliath said, I'll kill you, huh? you, I'll kill you and give your flesh to the best. David wasn't quiet. Me too, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> Me too, I'll kill you. I'll cut off your head. Where's, where's, you see, where's our spirit there? Eh? So when they tell you to talk, don't be quiet. When they say, the doctor say you, the way you your, 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 your die at so, 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 so I refuse it, I won't die. I'll, I'll die one 20 years. So, those who don't talk, they lose a lot. We like to talk. Look at Muhammad Ali. Huh? He will insult you plenty before they fight. He will annoy you. And if you come with annoyance, he will knock you down. Knock you down. So, Muhammad Ali's secret was that he will, he, he likes talking. He will talk you. Even in the, in, even in the, in the ring, he will come and da, 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 I'll beat you. Uh, and they will dodge you. He will annoy you till you are annoyed. And they will knock you down. So, when they are talking, talk some. They say something, hey, you can make it. I can make it. Be like David. You are cut your head off. Talk. Stephanie, talk, talk, talk. So, all, all, all the things that they so about, the last thing is that you must obey the word. Walk in the word. All that I'm saying is lastly, walk in the word. Obey the word. Amen. Don't understand before you obey. Obey before you complain. Do you understand? Some say, I don't understand tithe. You pay the tithe and see the outcome. I don't understand the first truth. Pay the first truth and see the outcome. Because understanding comes by the way, by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. 
by faith we understand. So understanding comes by faith. John 10, verse John 10, John 8, John 8, verse 31, 32. There's something there. John 8, 31, 32. John 8, 31, 32. If ye walk in my word, then are ye my disciples, and ye shall know the truth. Have you seen? So you walk in the way before you know. So don't know before you walk. <laughs> so get the word, walk in it, and then knowledge will open up unto you. Are you getting me? The last example is that Jesus Christ went for a wedding at Cana. You know Cana? The wedding got finished. Disgrace, shame was coming. So the mother came and said, Jesus Christ, please, uh, the wedding is finished. Please, can you do something? She said, Mother, my time hasn't come. What has this got to do with me? So the mother went to the disciples, the, the servants, and to them, whatever he tells you, do it. John 2, verse 1 to 10. You read the account there. So the mother sat down, and then Jesus Christ went and told the, the servants, please, fill the vessels with water and serve. And just serve. They said, ah, Jesus Christ, are you crazy? Ah, water, how can we serve water? Don't know water. This one, we don't do it, we don't do it. But this service obeyed because the mother told them, whatever he tells you, do it. So they fetched the water and filled the vessels, the pots, and they said, and when they start serving, the thing became wine. Now, let me ask you, who performed the miracle? Well, it wasn't Jesus only. It was Jesus with the service. If he had disobeyed, they wouldn't have seen the miracle. So, obedience carries Miracle seed. When you obey God's word without trying to fidget, 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 you see miracles. Christ fed the 4,000. But who fed the 4,000? He blessed the five loaves of bread and the two fish. And gave it to the disciples to distribute. And they were saying, ah, Christ, what, what's wrong? Five loaves, me, we should distribute this one. Tofi Apa, me, distribute five loaves. But the disciples took it and began to distribute. When they decided to distribute it, the, the, the thing was multiplied. So the miracle was performed by Jesus Christ through the hands of the disciples. It was a collaboration. So obedience carries your future. It carries your destiny. When we say something, let's do something. Please don't try to ask me the questions. Faith doesn't ask me the questions. Do you understand? Faith is faith. Let's obey the word and do it. You are healed by faith, walk in faith. Your future is bright. Believe that one. Oh, you won't be poor. You will never die poor. Oh, you are, you are looking at me as if I'm, 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 I'm joking. Say amen to that one. Your amen is dead. It's sick. Your amen is to be carried to an uh, 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 emergency. Say amen to that one. Say to the righteous. Isaiah 3 verse 10. Say to the righteous. Your, what? It shall be well with, your, with you. So your future is guaranteed. You will, you will die strong. At 120 years, strong. Strong heart, strong heart. Do you hear me? Look, people will, will call you names. Don't mind that they are human beings. Are they God? Are they God? Can they kill you? They can destroy you. Forget about whatever they are doing. And believe in God's word. Today, I came to inject you. I inject you with faith. With God's word. Love God's word and cherish God's word. Your key to your future is the way. Stand your, on your feet right now. Amen. Leave your two hands up and give God a clap of free. Clap the Lord right now for the word of God. Amen. We'll take communion right now. But leave your two hands say, Lord, I thank you for your word. Say, Lord, let your word impact my life. Come okay, on, pray shortly. La Sakata. Zamito Saka. Pray, pray. And let's have the communion right now. La Sande de Betosi. La Kataria Noche. Lift your voice and thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank the Lord. Le Zuri and Zakatoshi Pronitosa. Le Kutaso Kaparianda. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and glory. Thank you. Little hands up, everybody. Little hands up. Say, Lord, from today, I value your word. From today, I cherish your word. I will never play with your word. I thank you for your word. I bless you, Lord. The host of body son and pray for the person that the word of God shall impact his life. Pray for the person right now. Pray for the person. Pray for him. May God's word bless him. 
God's your blessing. God's your blessing. Mado shito sakata. Dabato tanderito seke. Daro she balorian be sakata. Lazami aleko shendori aleka. Pray for the person. Daro yande sayala radoshi. Thank you so much, Lord. We give you praise. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. The blood that, that Jesus Now we'll tell the communion right now. For me. Jesus gave us two sacraments. Way back Baptism down. and the communion. Glory. Glory. The blood, the blood that gives me strength. Stretch your hands over here, everybody. Father, we bless the, the communion. Bless, we bless it, Lord. Bless your church. As we bring the communion to, today. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, you can come forward right now. Anybody just come forward and come and partake. The pastors can come. Pastor can come. Pastors can come. And then everybody just come. Come forward and partake. Oh, yeah. We back. Cabaret. Oh, hey, hey, hey. The blood, the blood that gives me strength. Oh, 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 oh. today, it will never lose its power. Sing out of the riches. I don't know what is going on in your life and your body, but Jesus knows. He cares for you. He loves you. Understand that Jesus loves you. Please, he loves you so much. He was the best for you. Don't think that what you are going through, he's not aware. He's aware. But he wants you to love him. He wants you to come close to him. He wants you to love him with your heart. So, anything you are going through right now, as you take the body of Jesus, say, Lord, just Help me, Lord. Lift the body up. Say, Lord, as I partake your body, help me, Lord. Strengthen me to go through my situations. Because your word says, I am more than a conqueror. I receive my healing. Every sickness in my body, Lord, heal my body right now. In Jesus' name. Let's take it now. Satan fears the blood, the blood, and the word of our testimony. And as we drink the blood, in the spirit of Satan, in the demonic spirit, in the foul spirit, troubling your life, your body, may the blood overcome in Kazaran on his name. See, Lord Jesus, as I partake the blood, in the satanic entity, in the connection between me and forces of darkness, be disconnected. I overcome every satanic of power by the blood of Jesus. As I drink your blood, every sickness in me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet be healed right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Thank you, Lord. With your two hands to God, I say thank you, Lord. I bless thank you. you Lord. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you for the cross. Just Thank once. you for the cross, Lord. Let's sing this song right now. Thank, Thank you for the price you paid. Thank you. Bearing all my sin and shame. Yes, Lord. In love you gave. Thank 
Hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody you are blessed. You are blessed by the way. You are blessed by the way. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your seat. If you brought your tithe, your first fruit, you may please come. And let's thank God for your life. Your tithe. Tithe is one tenth of your blessings. Every month or every week, when God blesses you with something, you take a tenth of it and say, Lord, I honor you with a tenth. Because it is God that blesses us. Amen. Hallelujah. So every month you, you pile up your tithe. Or if you like, every week you just decide to pay your tithe to God as and when you are blessed. Amen. Amen. Now, we, then we have an offering here. Offering pack, offering envelope. Yeah, oh, I took the wrong one. Now, we try to take all offerings in one envelope. But you can indicate if it's a tight, you can indicate tight. If it's a tight, because we take records, your name must be written. Uh, breakfast sacrifice, because we take records. The breakfast sacrifice is for the building of the church, right? You know, you know it. It is about, for instance, um, every day your breakfast is two CDs or three CDs. It sacrifices that three CDs because of the building. Now, sometimes you say, okay, let me eat. Even if you eat, your, you chop your breakfast, value it, and pay it as a, a sacrifice to God. Hallelujah. So you multiply by seven days. So if it's three cities, it's your breakfast. Times seven will give you what? 21 Ghana cities. You put it in the envelope as your breakfast sacrifice for the building. Amen. Then we have Kingdom Vision Partners. That one is about... Every month, some are pledged to give something every month to God. Amen. As part of Now we are going for a crusade. We use such money for crusades and other things. If there's any other, you can state. But if it's just a simple uh, offering you are giving, don't write your name. Just put it in this envelope and let's give it out to the Lord. But if it's a tight breakfast sacrifice, kingdom vision partners, or crossover pledge, you write your name and then state with a pen, what and what is in the envelope to make it simple for us. Please turn your feet right now and lift your offering to the Lord. Father, we thank you and bless you, give you glory. We pray that as we give this, your blessings shall come on your church in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Baba God, I believe you. I believe it. You talk a more, you they do a more. Baba God, I believe you. Baba God, I believe you. I believe. I believe everything when you say. As you talk a more, as you talk a 
Amen. That is sweet, sweet word. Hallelujah. Amen. Please stretch forth your hand as we pray over the offerings. Glorious Father, we want to thank you for your word that we have received this day. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And Father, we ask that you grant us the grace to be able to walk even in your word. We want to bless you and thank you again for the seeds that you ministered to us. Father, as we sow our seeds this morning before your presence, we ask that you multiply every seed we have sown. And Lord, we ask that you bless every giver to the glory of your wonderful name. Give us a turnaround in our financial destinies to thy glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. And let the saints say a big amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's sit down. Okay, we are closing right now, so don't sit, don't sit down. Announcements. Okay, let's take announcements very fast and then please sit down shortly.